Good day to you, friends, and welcome to today's devotion for Monday, March 23rd. Today I'm going to read a psalm of lament. And before I do, I want to do something that I like to do to um, initiate prayer time, is I like to light a candle. And this is a special candle. It's, some, it's one that a friend gave to me when I was going through a difficult time. And she told me that when I light this candle, that I am to remember that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. So I need to light the match again. And that in itself is a prayer, isn't it? The light shines in darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. And indeed, that's what our time together signifies to me today. That light, Jesus is the light of the world. And as we continue to abide in him and let his love show through us, we too will bear that light to the world. So to the topic of lament, especially lament in the Psalms. The authors of the Psalms were very real people with very real feelings and a very real faith in God. And they didn't shy away from any of those things. So a Psalm of lament is an expression of going through a very painful and difficult time. And also a very deep faith and hope that God will bring them through this difficult time and will show them safely through to the other side. So I'm going to read Psalm 137. It is a Psalm of lament. It was written at a time when the Israelites were exiled from Jerusalem. Jerusalem had been destroyed. The temple had been destroyed, the central place where they knew the presence of God would be. And they were in Babylon. So they were exiled from their homeland. They were in a place that was foreign to them, among foreigners, eating food that wasn't familiar to them. And the people around them had customs that they weren't accustomed to. So how could they be faithful to God in this foreign land? That's one of the primary questions of this Psalm 137. There's also a lot of grief that is expressed in this Psalm. So with that in mind, I invite you now to listen for and to hear the words of Psalm 137. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down and there we wept when we remembered Zion, that is Israel. On the willows there we hung our harps, for there our captors asked us for songs, and our tormentors asked for mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How could we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand wither. Let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth if I do not remember you, if I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy. Remember, O Lord, against the Edomites, the day of Jerusalem's fall, how they said, tear it down, tear it down, down to its foundations. O daughter Babylon, you devastator, happy shall they be who pay you back what you have done to us. Happy shall they be who take your little ones and dash them against the rock. And this too is the word of the Lord. And yes, I can say that it's the word of the Lord because my understanding of the Bible is that it is, it's a collection of writings about how to be faithful to God and the ways that God is faithful to us. And this Psalm 137, this Psalm of Lament, has some very beautiful reminders for us in there, some very deep pain that's expressed in there. And I think some pain that's expressed both in a healthy way and in a way that's not terribly helpful, healthy or helpful. 
Um, when I think about wanting my enemies, babies, to be dashed against rocks, I, I simply can't go there. But I haven't experienced what they've experienced. And also, I want to say that, uh, that we're all a work in progress. And this psalm reminds us of that as well. But how do we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? That is such a good question for us today. How do we continue to be faithful when our whole world is turned upside down right now? When we have physically distanced ourselves from one another? How do we continue to show forth the love of Christ in this time? Those are all good questions. How do we sing this song? It's a good question. And I trust, as I believe the psalmist did, because they wrote this psalm down, that God will show us the answer. God is faithful. God will show us how to sing the song in this strange land. And about the babies or the little ones and their heads being dashed against rocks, etc., I'd like to share something from Henry Nouwen, which I think kind of sheds a little bit of light on that. Henry Nouwen was a great spiritual teacher and writer and pastor, and he talked about the abyss, this abyss that exists within all of us. And there are two mistakes we can make with regard to the abyss. I'll let him tell you first, and then I'll talk a little bit more about it. So this is from Henry Nouwen. There is a deep hole in your being, like an abyss. You will never succeed in filling that hole because your needs are inexhaustible. You have to work around the abyss so that gradually it closes. Since the hole is so enormous and your anguish so deep, you will always be tempted to flee from it. There are two extremes to avoid, being completely absorbed in your pain and being distracted by so many things that you stay far away from the wound you want to heal. So the abyss can be the fear you feel right now, the sadness you feel right now because of the isolation. It can be the panic, the anxiety, whatever that abyss is that you are recognizing in yourself right now. Henry Nouwen is saying that there are two extremes that are not helpful with regard to that abyss. The first is to completely ignore it, to distance yourself from it, to do everything you can to distract yourself from even recognizing that it exists. But there are psychologists and spiritual teachers who will say, if you do that, if you ignore the shadow, the shadow is going to come back and manifest itself in some way that you really didn't intend. Like maybe expressing that you want babies' heads to be dashed against rocks. So that's one extreme in working with your abyss, is to distance yourself from it and to completely ignore it. The other extreme is to not only acknowledge that it exists, but that's the only thing that exists about you. And you become com completely absorbed by it. You're consumed by it, such that you never see anything but the abyss. So if you spend your whole day, you know, watching CNN or Fox News, and you're constantly being reminded of the chaos and the destruction and the devastation and the sadness and all the terrible things that are going on, you can allow yourself to be consumed. And, and as I said, Henry Nouwen said, that's another um, extreme where you don't want to go. It's not healthy. It's not hopeful. It's not faithful. The idea is to acknowledge the abyss exists. The fear exists. We're in a strange land. We're in a strange place. And also acknowledge that God is. And God is the source of our strength. God is the source of hope for us. God will teach us how to sing in this new foreign land where we find ourselves. 
So that's the message for today. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we ask, how do we sing your song in this place of exile? And we ask you that question because we know you are faithful to answer it. Great is thy faithfulness that our souls know very well. We thank you for the gift of your grace and for your love. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And thank you for stopping in. And peace be with you.